Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Not Playing Magic. Uh, this is a this is a four three two two um, as and restore draft. So uh, in this opening pack here, um, what I'm taking a look at first is the rare, which is uh, it's okay. It, it might be playable in some scenarios, but it's not a first pick rare, uh, leaving me to pretty much come to either try to build around a blood artist, take the blessings of nature. Or pick up the riot ringleader. Uh, none of these picks here would cut very hard. So if we take the riot ringleader, we're still passing these two cards. If we take the blessings, we're still passing a, a borderland and a peddler. Um, hmm. However, we'll go ahead and take the riot ringleader. Um, I think it's a better card than blessings when. Blessings is fine when you hit the Miracle, but sometimes it just kind of kills you in an opening hand, uh, etc. Alright, well, um, probably the best thing to pair red with is white humans. Uh, and if that were going to be our game, we would definitely then grab the Pilgrim. Uh, taking a look at what else is in this pack, I don't really see much, so I think that will be our game. We'll try to try to pair red-white. Uh, we'll still see what comes along through these packs. Um, didn't see any red in that last pack, but there was only one card taken, and uh, it was the rare, so, you know, maybe that pack just didn't have any red, which is quite likely. Uh, in that case, the person who picked the rare might be out of red because they're in the whatever color that was, so. Let's see what we've got. I think as a, as a one, two punch, though, a two drop, three drop, these are some of the best. Um, obviously, if you had a, like, a Silver Blade Paladin or something you're able to pick up, that's probably a better three drop, but... Uh, for the human stack, crew and strikers sitting here, and then riot ringleaders, uh, and cathars and handware lancers sitting here, are the uh, the curve out you want to go for. I do make the mistake sometimes of playing this uh, aggressive red white human stack, and uh, not um, not having sort of an end game, uh, not having a way to finish an opponent. Um, so. I do want to be more conscious of uh, of picking something that if you know the game board stalls out to turn ten, that I still have a chance to win. So maybe a giant angel or two, or you know something that gets up in the air, or some big, big fat red drop or something. So we'll keep our eyes open. Here the pick is going to be between the vigilant justice, the Cathar, uh, and the vampire. I don't think nugging for four in this deck is where we want to be. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hmm. They both come out on turn four, and they both play well with Thatcher's Revolt. Uh, I think we'll see another vampire, though. Um, those generally aren't too hard to get more of, um, and this pack is just full of garbage. This is one of those packs that people talk about when they say they don't like the format. Uh, you know how many cards have been taken here? Three, and the rest are, you know, tenth pick, not fourth pick, which we're going to have to take a Zealous Strike in that slot, so I'm not even interested in that pack coming back around. If it were to uh, on turn 11, come back to us empty, I would just be like, alright, that's fine. So, let's see. Uh, with the Vigilant Justice, we're going to take as many Thatcher's Revolt as possible and use it as our removal. Um, the good thing about Vigilant Justice is to uh, come you know, mid to late game, if you start being able to you know, play two or three creatures per turn, it uh, puts you in a really good spot. A Voice of the Province um, even helps you out here, so... Uh, a few good things. Alright, well, uh, I think we're just going to cut off red completely here. I wish we were playing blue at this point. Uh, Into the Void, um, one of the, my favorite cards in the set. Uh, we'll take the first Thatcher's Revolt um, and uh, plan to play as many as possible. Sorry, typing on my other screen as a uh, as I'm waiting for these packs to go. Um, and now that the channel is getting uh, more and more viewers, I'm uh, likely to switch to a, a slightly better video recording software. I don't think the quality on this is poor or anything, but, um, but I want something with a pause so we can, we can keep you guys, uh, in the games rather than waiting. Um, Alright, so... I mean, I suppose we just take the chaplain here and keep on our colors. 
one thing I found in this in Avicen's especially is if you start uh, if you start trying to swing colors too early um, it can really really come back to get you uh, here we'll probably take the vessel in case we find something worth splashing um, or in case you know we open up uh, druids familiar or something uh, we'd probably switch over to green in which case uh, we need more playables and pulling out fatty so um, I always wish this card was a human and I don't know why it's not I mean I get that they used to be uh, but tormentors trident is fine it's maybe too slow for this deck we'll have to see how this deck curves out as of now we only have three creatures um, as you guys can see so uh, We'll have to keep our eyes open. Um, I think the fact that the Peddler came back is a fairly good signal. We'll get a Cloud Shift at some point in the draft if we wanted one. Um, that being said, let's say we grab a Malcontents or something. You know what, I'm almost fine playing green-white and splashing in, uh, you know, a few few Thatcher's Revolts, the Ringleader and the Vigilante Justice, which I guess at that point isn't a splash. Uh, they're single red cost casting cards. Um, yeah, so I don't think it... Uh, I don't think it really gets us to to consider that at this point. Okay, we'll take Rush of Blood. It's the only card that's um, got potential to see play apart from the land. We do need to uh, define ourselves really early in the second pack, and I guess what I mean by that is, okay, here, we'll gladly take the Vigilante. What I mean by define ourselves is, I feel like right now we've just got sort of a, you know, a collection of pretty low-powered creatures. Um, I really would like to get sort of a, a signature card. Oh, perfect, that's a late protector. That pack had two, though. It had a foil and a regular. It's the pack that we took the uh, Thatcher's Revolt in. Um, as a quick aside, sorry. Uh, someone took the land over the wager. Let me know if you guys have played Malicious Intent. This card here, the enchantment. Um, you can tap your own creature to make their creature not able to block. Okay, well, this pack is uh, disgusting, and if we could just take seven of these cards we could build our deck right now and quit um the pick here is obviously going to be zealous conscripts what i would like to see come back is the mad prophet because i know force mage hollow geist and pilgrim are going to get scooped um but we still we know uh at this point that well let's go ahead and hide up here so we're not really um confusing ourselves uh, we know at this point though that red's going to be a good creature a good color for us we need humans zealous conscripts is an absolutely fine card uh so we'll, we'll stay in that realm. Um, hmm. This card's really tough to get out on turn three if you're not green. Uh, I hate passing that card to someone, though. Um, it means that... Uh, yeah, I, I just... I really don't want to pass this card, and I don't want to pass this card. The only, I guess, benefit here is that uh, we'll take a Pillar of Flame. Um, this early is a... a I think it's a fine pickup. Uh, respect to the Geist Trappers, I think this card's a very good card, and if it comes back in this pack, we're going to take it very quickly. Um, the Pillar's just a, a, always a good card. Alright, uh, so here's a pick between the Thatcher's Revolt and the Cathar. Um, I have to de determine here if I think the Thatcher's Revolt's coming back. Uh, two other considerations here. Um, the Moonlight Geist and the Deathwind. I don't think we're going to play Red, White, Splash, Black for Deathwind, though it's a very viable, viable thought. Um, Moonlight Geist does, It's. I know it's kind of curves us out the wrong way with a Spirit at 3-drop, but um, being able to prevent all combat damage flyers could deal to you is a big game. Uh, that being said, we need to get our 3-drop spot and more creatures, um, so we'll take the actual creature. I think we will wheel one or two Thatcher's Revolts if this draft plays out like any of the others. Um, it's kind of sad that we haven't gotten another Havengold Vampire uh, yet. Um, easy pick for us here. Uh, looks like green is getting sliced in these packs, so as the only chance we'd have of getting green now is in pack three, and that's going to be a little late to make that choice. So we're going to take the well, best red two drop in Kruin Striker. We'll go ahead and hide the Peddler. Um, we'll go ahead and hide the Scrapper. I'm not against playing the Scrapper. I think that if you know the board stalls out, he can do some good things for you if you pair him with a Handware Lancer, uh, give him a pump for a strike or something. Um, okay, so do we take the Geist here or another Thatcher's Revolt? And I think that we're going to go ahead and uh, take another Thatcher's Revolt. 
With Kruin Striker in hand now, I don't feel bad having two Thatcher's Revolts. If we get one more card, like the Vampire, another Ringleader, another Kruin Striker, then I think that would sort of uh, lock us into kind of grabbing as many as possible, because every single one we get um, is going to be playing well with uh, Vigilante Justice. And here's one of my favorite three drops in the set, in Farbog Explorer. He's a human, he Swamp Walks. Um, you pair him with a Fire Breather, and your opponent has Swamps in play, and... Uh, you know, you can start poking in a, a good amount of damage. So our curve for this kind of deck, in my mind, is a little bit... Um, I feel like we're a little bit slow, and I don't want to be slow in this deck. Um, Alright, not a whole lot going on in this pack. Um, geez, I think we're more likely... The problem I have with this card is... If I turn 5, if I have double red out, and I'm casting this instant, holding back, uh, say, a Zealous Conscripts, or maybe even one of these two cards, I've got Trample, I've got cards I would like to trade. I think my opponent's one toughness creatures at that point are almost all but gone. Um, so we'll take the Bladed Bracers. Uh, probably won't play all of that, but, um, yeah. We'll take a mid -mass Protector here. And one thing that I do have to uh, be considered of at this point in the draft uh, and something I sometimes forget, though I haven't drafted Zealous Conscripts a lot, is we have a you know big incentive at this point to um, take as many Cloud Shifts as we can fit in our deck profitably, because then we're Zealous Conscripting them as many times over uh, as the number of Cloud Shifts we've got. So just something to consider and something that I kind of whiff on, on occasion. Uh, we'll take the Hunted Ghoul and hide him is that now we have basically two Zealous Conscript effects, right, with a Cloud Shift. Um, and if we can grab one more Cloud Shift, uh, Resto Angel, um, anything like that, then yeah, we're going we're gonna to be pinging this guy uh, to pieces. Now I would also consider Splashing Blue for a... Uh, if we open up a Dead Eye Navigator, we're Splashing Blue. If we open up a Nephalia Smuggler, the uh, one mana, one one human that uh, allows you to ping your own guy for three and a blue. Um, we have to really consider that because uh, being able to bounce this in and out um, each turn is it's you know it's a game winning move. Alright so we'll go ahead and hide our lands. One thing to think about here would we take a Slayer Stronghold. Um, this is really the only deck that can. I almost feels like I almost feel like that plays out too slow sometimes. Um, okay, I know I said that I wanted to get a big angel and there's one. Um, but uh, passing this guy kind of stinks. He's a, an undying creature, which is really tough to deal with at 5-4 toughness flying. Um, I think Riot Ringleader is the obvious choice here. We would play 8 of those in our 3 drop if we had 8. Um, better in numbers, you know, just everything that you want a sort of a buffing card to be when you can play 2 out in a row or, you know, whatever your scenario is. That's the that's card we'll first pick and be happy about once we're set red-white. And I do apologize, I think uh, this is now going to be, um, I've got a few drafts uh, kind of stored off in, in folders and things, but this is going to be uh, another red-white draft for you guys on YouTube, and I know I do that kind of a bit. Okay, this is just a, this is just terrible. I don't want to see this ever. Um, ugh. Just depressing to see a pack like this exist. Um, I'm not even going to take the Duelist. I have one, and one is way too many already. <sighs> Scalding Devil, I mean, I guess he puts us something in a two-drop slot. Uh, passing, I, I would almost rather, on a second pick in a pack, hate out a Favorable Winds or a uh, Marrow Bats, Skeleton Bats or whatever those are, than pick a Scalding Devil. Um, so, yeah. All right. Uh... Here our question is a Angelic Armaments or a Thunderous Wrath. We'll go ahead and take the Thunderous Wrath. Um, I don't think it's as good of a card as uh, you know it's made out to be. You hit it in your opening hand in a 40 card hand and uh, it really slows you down in our style of deck. Okay, um, this card someone's going to get and do a lot of work with. Uh, unfortunately it's not going to be us. Um, I feel like blue was the way to go in this draft and blue is my favorite draft color to play. Wish I was there, but we'll take that another perfect fire. Um, our deck is sort of starting to look at look like what it's going to end up as. We still need to grab one more fatty or two, I feel like, and uh, 
with with a vessel already in hand. I would even take a a, a one color mana fatty to splash or even a two color. Um, I think at this point. Uh, we're going to probably hide the Duelist. I wish we would have gotten a Stone right. I think he's a more intimidating presence on uh, turn one than a Vigilante. Um, we don't have any... Uh, what's the guy? The first strike guy. Hanware Lancers, which this deck generally needs. Um, okay. You guys let me know what you think of this play. But we're doing it. We're cutting this here over a Spectral Gate Guards. Uh, so sue me. I... I think this card is worth splashing, and I, I'll i splash in the pedal or two at this point, because, uh, yeah, that card's nuts in a deck where we're only going to play humans. Um, I hope we get it out. I hope that we don't just uh, go 0-2 in round 1 and get, like, mana screwed or something and not be able to play it. I really hope that we can play that uh, for you guys, because I'm interested in playing it myself. All right, um, maybe a little early to play Curse Break for the board, uh, but we already have one Zealous Strike and one Zealous we're going to play in this deck. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a curse break here. Uh, it's sometimes needed for the sideboard if they have homicidal seclusion or anything like that. Alright, um, we'll take the call to serve here. I wish we would have gotten a Falcon Wrath Exterminator or something too. Alright, another Vigilante or a Farbog. Um, let's see, I'd like to play... Hmm. I don't think I'm going to play two of either to be completely honest, so let me know what you guys think, but we're just going to go ahead and retake the aggravate we were offered initially. Alright, uh, nothing worth playing there. Um, yeah, I don't see... I don't see what does it for us. Um, this is sort of just the, the garbage into the picks. Um, okay, so I don't think that we got enough out of this draft to get us there. Uh, just looking at it early on. Um, we, we needed another crew and striker or two. We really could have used a handware lancer, um, a seraph of dawn. We've got nothing that gets up in the air. Uh, I, I don't think this, this is very good. We might end up playing that banner's race, to be completely honest. Um, but, uh, that being said, if you get off to a quick start in AVR, uh, this red white deck will win on turn four, five, or six, something similar. Um, if we get stalled out, I suppose we still have the Vigilante's Justice, which allows us to just kind of keep pinging our opponent's head. Um, we have really no way to stop Flyers, uh, which is going to absolutely destroy us as the games drag out, because every you know every finisher in this format's a Flyer. Um, so yeah, not not terribly happy about about this draft, but um, you know we'll we'll hit deck building and see what what goes on. All right, well, um, let's go ahead and take a look at deck building, obviously. Um, we're going to play the Peddler since we're going to splash. I don't know if we need to Vessel, but we might. Um, we're going to go ahead and toss in our must plays. Oops, something I don't think. Yeah, okay, that's good. So let's, uh, let's get our curve out here. Um, we need to play a Cloud Shift, the Pilgrim, the Inquisitor. We need to play the call to serve in this deck, and you guys let me know what you think of that. I know it slows us down a bit, but if we get if we get stuck um, against a flyer, at least that puts something in the air and gives it a butt. And then we'll play one of Midvast at least, one of Farbog. Um, okay, so this puts us at 21. Um, what do we think is a better thing to have in hand? As bladed bracers? Yeah, I mean we don't have we only have one one drop creature we're playing right now, so we'll go ahead and take the bladed bracers. Um, I think they're better for us than the Trident would be. Uh, sometimes the auto attack is um, is actually more detrimental than you want it to be. If you saw, I think my last video I had to ping a, a Trident around and it uh, didn't work out too well for me. Um, so we only need to toss in uh, one more card. Uh, it's not going to be in red, it doesn't look like. 
I don't think that uh, Scalding Devil does it for us. Um, might be Duelist. Uh, no, it'll just be another Protector. Um, that card can be fine. Uh, and it can, if we're to the point where, let's say, you know, on turn four, we've got our opponent down pretty low and he's just starting to stabilize, that could be the guy that pushes us through uh, turn four and turn five with maybe our right ringleader or something, um, giving them pro whatever their blocker is. So that could be the guy that really pushes us through to end some games. I think he's a, a good play out here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, add some land here. Let's see what we're suggested. 10-5-2, um, that's probably going to go 8, 6, 3. Eh, 3 is a little high on the color that we're not maining, so. Um, I know that we're red heavy, but I don't want to miss on the 2 drop uh, Pilgrim. Um, maybe 6-9 is the way to go. Uh, our opening hand's more likely not to have the Pilgrim in it than it is to have it. So. Let's see. All right, this puts our 40-card deck uh, as what we see here. Um, we have a vessel to accelerate a little bit, and we have our um, two forests over here to try to get out our descendant's path. Now let's take a look at our creature type. I like having... Uh, we only have 13 creatures, which kind of scares me um, for that card splash. So let's take a look actually at creature type and see if this makes sense. Um, thing is, every creature we're playing is indeed a human. Um, all of these guys here. Uh, over on this side of the board, we have our Vigilante Justice, um, two Thatcher's Revolts. Uh, these are all cards that I think we have to keep in the deck. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So how does Descendant's Path actually do for us? Um, otherwise our card's going on the bottom of our library uh, so what does this mean? this means that we're going to be burying our uh, that we're possibly burying some of our Thatcher's Revolts um, though if our first card hit is a human this only activates once obviously so um, I still like our odds uh, we have Really, the only cards that are going to completely, you know, get us um, in that case is the Thatcher's Revolt or the Vigilante Justice. So I think three out of forty, even four out of forty, if you take a look at maybe one of these other two spells, I think that's okay enough. And uh, also, I do like Nightshade Peddler. So we're going to go ahead and submit this. Um, you guys, let me know what you think of the draft. What you would have done differently? Um, do you play the Descendant's Path and the Peddler? Even uh, who knows. But we'll see what happens in round one. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe.